I bought myself some little treats. I've been wanting to buy myself some really nice paints and I was thinking those were gonna be oil paints. But then I was thinking about how uh, one of my goals for starting back up on my painting journey is to try and paint outside more. I almost never do that, partially because <laughs> acrylics and oils take a lot of supplies to get done and I'm not a fan of watercolor. I just have not, me and watercolor have not found our place together yet. But between watercolor and acrylics is something called gouache. And I've not worked very much with gouache at all. I bought some Hemi jelly paint gouaches, um, but haven't worked with them much at all because they're like a big box. In the like attempt to make a painting medium really portable for me, really easy to take and paint on the go, I bought some really nice gouache paints and then two really, portable paint palette kind of things that I'm really excited about. So <laughs> I'm gonna have the links for these in the description. I got them on Amazon, but I haven't opened them up yet. So I wanna open them up with you and take a peek because I'm not super familiar with gouache paints. This isn't gonna be like a real review. This is more like gonna be me experimenting with new things, which feels good. I really want something where I can just like go sit down by a river and like paint for a little bit or like sit outside on a little lawn chair and like paint a tree in my backyard. So we're gonna um, open these up and take a look. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So let's see what we got. Okay, let's start with the paint. So these are Holbein gouache paints made in Japan. I chose these because I was doing some research on what a nice brand of gouache would be, but that wasn't too nice so that it wouldn't cost me like a billion dollars, but I would still get a really high quality paint. And this was what was suggested by a couple articles that was just below like the top tier. So it was still affordable, but very, very nice. So it's got 12 colors in here, it says. Little 15 millimeter tubes, so pretty small. Ooh, what a nice little box. Okay, so take this off. Ooh. Oh, it's so pretty there in rainbow work. Look at that. These are gorgeous. I think that's gonna be plenty for me to start out with. They, they do make bigger sizes, but I wanted to start with something small and see if it was a brand that I actually was gonna enjoy. And also if I was gonna enjoy this medium at all. Carmine. Flame red. Permanent yellow deep. So it's like a lemon yellow. Yep, lemon yellow. We have a Permanent green light. Permanent green deep. Oh, this is pretty. I like that one a lot. A turquoise blue. An ultramarine deep. Violet. Burnt sienna. I love using this for like an under undercolor. Ivory black and permanent white. So from what I know about gouache paints is that they are similar to watercolor where they're activated by water, but they're more opaque than watercolor is. So they're not quite as transparent. So that means that I can take these little tubes that are currently liquid and put them in a container and let them dry. And then I can just use, just like watercolor, dipping my brush in water and then putting it on the dried out paints and they'll start to come back to life. So that's why I got these plus this tiny little guy, which is, it said it's for watercolor. It says, what, what, watercolor to in palette per, uh, acrylics paint white. It's just basically a little metal tin. Okay, okay, so it comes with the tiny little pan, these little stickies, 
and tin box for homemade watercolor. It is, oh my gosh, it's so itty bitty. 2.4 by 1.8 by 0.6 inches. Look how small that is, it just fits right in my hand. This is about as portable as it gets. <laughs> this open. Ooh, ooh, oh, that's nice. So there's not a lot of surface area to mix on, but that's the point, is that it's so freaking small that literally it, you throw it in your pocket. So let's put some of these little tiny stickies on the bottom of this. Put that right in there. Give it a good squish. Oh, yes! So this cost me like $7, $8. And um, I think I got it on slightly, slightly on sale, but I'll put the link so you can see how much it is right now. And now I can fill up each one of these with a different color so that I can take this with me and use it to paint. So I got this tiny, tiny, tiny one. And then I also wanted to get one that was a little bit nicer and a little bit bigger. So I got this, which is also a little metal tin. While this is like two and a half by two inches, this is about five by three by one. So definitely more room and a little bit bigger, but I wanted to have both to see what it would cost. And this cost me like $8 and this cost me like, I think like 15, not much at all. Oh, well, it's got a solid little seal on it. Ooh, okay, so these are the two mixing pans here. And these are little like divoted mixing pans there. And then you have these half pans. Oh, hey, look at that. So this can come out so you can like wash it. Oh! Oh, and they click in. Oh, that's super nice. So these little metal, little hooks right there, just snap them into place. And so then you can just, you can either take this out and set it aside. Oh, and then, oh my God, I did not know this. You can take these out, set it aside, and then you have a bunch more areas to do your mixing on if you need more. It also has this little loop in the back that you can put your thumb through. Wow, that's really nice. So this certainly has a lot more room for mixing than this one, and it still gets pretty compact. So I think what I'm gonna do, oh, I need some like water brushes. Oh, I have a couple. I have um, these from when I was, back in the day when I was trying watercolor. Do these even work anymore? These are old. I think I need to give me some new ones. I can use these water brushes to like get the paint up and draw it around once it dries, but I also have it while it's wet. So I think I'm gonna try both. I'm gonna fill up all these little half pans and then set those aside to dry so I can start like prepping these for being like uh, outdoor travel adventure paints. And then after that, I think I'm going to test these out while they're wet still and do some sketchbook paintings and see what happens. So let's get these filled up. I've never done this before, so I'm very nervous. How gorgeous that is. Tiny, tiny little guy. So I'm gonna let this sit out. I'm just gonna let them do their thing for a bit. I'm gonna fill up this guy, which I've started, and then experiment with some of the stuff. So apparently I can't count and I thought this was 12. It is not 12, it is 14. So <laughs> I've got two extra spaces there and I'm just gonna leave them empty for right now and see what colors to use the most of. So I'm also going to put that guy in there and set this aside and see if we can play around with these wash paints now in my sketchbook and see what we can make. Here is my sketchbook. It's decoupage, but it's actually a Canson Mixed Media sketchbook with 60 pages. This is just the one I've been using recently. I've got a bunch of stuff in here and I've been using exclusively acrylics. 
I kind of like using acrylics in my mixed media sketchbook. It does curl. So I guarantee these guys are gonna make it curl too, but that really doesn't bother me very much. It doesn't curl that bad. Um, and mixed media sketchbooks are just like a little bit cheaper often than a watercolor sketchbook. So we're gonna use this same sketchbook. And I think what I'm gonna do is probably sketch out a couple just like a little imaginary landscapes and like play really quickly with the colors before I like try and do anything serious. So I'm just kind of like mess around and doodle and then fill in whatever I end up sketching them. I tested out the little gouache paints. I loved how vibrant these were and I really liked how opaque they were too. I kind of expected them to be a little more transparent, but they actually were like pretty solid, which I liked a lot because I do like to work in like more opaque layers than like a bunch of like transparent washes. The gouache as a medium itself definitely tested me I kind of was defaulting to trying to use it like acrylics and it mostly worked, but like not all the way. So I definitely need a lot, a lot more practice with this medium, but I'm excited about it. I think this is gonna be a really great alternative for me to be on the go painting, like at the airport or like camping or like this. I think this is gonna be so much easier because all I need is a tiny little doodad and Water, brushes, and a little paper towel. So here's what my little, here's what my little test sketchbook page looks like for my little gouache paints that I just got. I really kind of like, that one I think is interesting in concept with the little foam on top of the little waves here. Obviously these were all like, these took me less than 20 minutes each and this one took me about three whole seconds because I was I was sick of this, <laughs> this page. So like they obviously all could, Piece. They could all have a lot more time invested in them, but I really was just trying to test out, hi handsome. I was really just trying to test out what these paints were like, and I'm pretty excited about the results. The medium itself is still challenging, but definitely moving in the right direction to have a little more convenience when I'm painting on the go. The little palettes with the gouache in it are looking really good. They're gonna take a bit to dry, but I'm so excited to give these a try. So I'm definitely gonna show some of me testing that out soon, but I really want them to be like fully or mostly dry first before I start really testing those out. I also really love to do like a sketchbook page where I really take my time and take more than like 20 minutes on a painting to see like how in depth I can go with this gouache. I still have on my palette here, little dried up chunks of the paint that I can still use. So I think I might try and paint something a little more serious as opposed to something like very quick and see how I like the paints then. I'm liking them so far, but I'm still skeptical. I'm very cautious because I do get like everyone gets stuck in their favorite mediums wanting to like use what they're comfortable with and I want to be able to branch out when it is helpful like different mediums can be very helpful for different things so I'm pushing myself and it is hard but I'm doing it we're sitting out in the sunroom while it's raining outside it's really nice so I'm I'm usually it kind of like a sunshine and rainbows kind of person. Um, but I'm also <laughs> a very, I mean, obviously I'm a very emotional person. Um, and I also 
like am not able to push down when I'm sad at all at all if I'm sad everybody knows it everybody knows it and uh, the last couple days have been a little bit rough on me we had a traumatic incident um, a baby bunny nest was found by a certain someone and one of the babies did not make it the other two were still safe inside the nest and so I put a bunch of leaves and stuff around it to see if the mama would come back to make sure that the babies were being taken care of. And I did that for two nights and nothing was disturbed on either of those nights. Today we called uh, Animal Wildlife Hospital Rehabilitation Center and um, they said to bring them in. And so I got a little paper box and I put a little towel at the bottom and then a little gray blanket all around the sides with a couple little hot hands, you know, those pocket warmer kind of things. I put those on the sides so they'd stay warm. And um, my wife Nikki held the umbrella for me while I went and I grabbed the two uh, baby bunnies that were still in the nest out and put them in the box to like stay warm and get them to the hospital. And so we drove them over to the animal hospital and when we got there, they were able to tell that they hadn't eaten in a couple days and that it was likely that the mom was not there and wasn't probably gonna come back. And so they took them in and they're now getting better at the hospital and they're no longer <laughs> in a hole by my house um, where they could be gotten by something <laughs> and uh, not being fed by their mama. So I'm, it, I cried so much the last couple days. I feel very emotionally attached to these bunnies it was it was more so I wasn't emotionally attached I wanted to make sure I could do everything I could to make sure that those other two were as safe as possible in any way that I could because I couldn't save that first one and so now that I know I've done what I can do they're in the hands of somebody who can do better for them uh, I'm feeling a lot better <laughs> but man oh man I cried so many tears you can't tell right now actually but I've had swollen eyeballs for like a day and a half because I've been crying over baby bunnies very emotional very traumatic but it's getting better it's getting better and so now I'm feeling good I need to eat a little something I haven't been eating the last couple days I'm telling you this this was an emotional journey that took me through a loop but it's got a little happy ending so I'm thinking about going to mess around with my gouache paints, eat a little something, and be able to finish up this vlog on a nice, happy bunny rescue note. So that's what I'm gonna go do. So with my gouache paints, I ended up painting really small, really calm scene. Just chill out my day, get my brain feeling a little more restful, and end this tiny little vlog with a tiny little painting. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video.